also have 92.3. Uh, if you missed some of the parade or if you want to see it again, minutes or so, they'll be back. Turn it up, turn it up. So the Minox 35 GT, this is the camera, this is the rangefinder so I'm taking it out, but this is the camera. It's a great camera. Um, in it by itself, uh, if I will have to use it without the rangefinder it will be impossible for me because the distances are in feet. The distances go in 3, 4, 6, 10, 20 and infinity feet. So you can have quite an accurate focus with this camera. And the apertures are really cool. They go on 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, and 16. And they have no steps in between. So you can put it in between 4 and 5.6, for example. So uh, you, can, you can operate it pretty smoothly. One good thing is when you see through the viewfinder, you can actually see the shutter speed that the camera is going to use. And then all you need to be aware is if you're overexposing or underexposing by following the needle that appears in the viewfinder. That is super useful. I really, I really appreciate that the camera has this. This is not a fully automatic camera. 
So you need to be aware of like opening or closing the, the aperture. Uh, that's the way you move the shutter speed. So you can manually select the shutter speed, but you can actually select how much light will get in by moving the uh, aperture. And that's pretty easy to do if you want to keep it consistent at, I don't know, 125. You just be aware that the needle should be at 125 and just take the picture. The lens is amazing. I took a test roll with the camera and I was blown away by how good it is. I wasn't expecting much actually. I, I, I shot with the FF1, the Ricoh FF1. Uh, if you haven't seen that episode, you can see it right now. Uh, and it's pretty similar to this camera but I felt way better using this one than the Ricoh. Partially because I would choose the aperture and the camera will tell me the shutter speed that it was gonna use, so I would know what it's gonna get. Uh, the FF1 doesn't have that option, it's more automatic, it's more similar to the Lomo LCA, um, but the fact that I could have the info on the viewfinder was super useful and it, it gave me a peace of mind, like I was much uh, relaxed taking pictures with this camera. And it's so pocket sized, like it's amazing. I've been carrying around this camera in my pocket for a few weeks now. I, I brought it to the US, which is of course where I shot the video, um, and, and I was carrying it in my pocket all the time and I was taking it out and taking random pictures in the city and having fun with this camera. This is a camera that you can put in your pocket uh, and have fun and you won't feel like you're making a compromise by using it. It's not like the Lomo LCA where you can use that camera and have fun and move around and take pictures but at the end of the day you don't really know what you're getting. That's one complaint that I have about the Lomo LCA is that I have a lot of fun using it but I don't exactly know how the pictures are going to turn out. So there's a certain um, magic, <laughs> there's a random element to it which is okay if you're if you're okay with that but this camera uh, will give you the results that you think you're gonna get. Like if, if you can envision what you want and you can make it happen, uh, this camera is really good for that. It can fulfill the vision that you have when you see a scene. Because what you see on the, on the viewfinder is pretty much what's gonna happen. The 35 millimeter 2.8 lens is amazing. Um, it's a color minotaur lens and it's, you know I'm not a sucker for sharpness and edge to edge, whatever, but in this regard, this lens is really good. The advanced lever is double. So when you take a picture, which by the way is super silent, I'm gonna take a picture now. You take a picture and the advanced lever, you have to move it two times in order to advance the frame, like so. That reminds me of my Leica M3, which is a double stroke camera also. And it's not bad, I understand why this is over here, because the, the movement that you have to make will be really big without these two advanced movements. But at the same time, it's not as comfortable as having only one. At the same time, it's not as uncomfortable as having one of those advanced wheels that are, I really, really don't like. The ASA behind here, uh, it goes all the way from 25 to 800. The top panel of the camera offers two options that I think are really cool for a compact camera. So the first one is the timer option. You just flip this switch and you get the timer option and it will give you a 10 second timer, which is really cool if you want to make like a, a, a self portrait or just a landscape shot or something that you don't want any movement on the camera by pressing the shutter, even though the shutter is really soft. Um, so there's not much movement when you do it, but there's the option, so that's pretty cool. And the other thing is this backlight compensation when you just flip the switch and it'll automatically add one stop of light uh, and like be open more time to let one more stop of light get in the film, that's what I mean. This camera in particular, uh, when I first got it, I wasn't really sure I was gonna like it because it's in feet and I'm, I don't know how to measure feet, uh, as you know. But when I use the rangefinder over here and now I can like focus what I wanna focus and then just transfer the settings onto the lens, Everything became so much easier with this. Uh, so I'm not guesstimating distances and I'm taking full advantage of shooting at 2.8. I don't know, I think it's much cooler than just shoot everything at f11. If everything is always in focus, it looks like one of those disposable cameras like or like those old compact cameras that your grandma used to have in which everything is always in focus and it, where nothing is really interesting. Uh, so it's good to have the option that you can go all the way up to f2.8 and have a nice uh, portrait. That's one of the things that seduced me about this camera is that I was um, doing a test roll and I took some shots, like some random shots with the rangefinder to see how it worked. 
I didn't have much hopes for it, but the portraits that I ended up making with this camera were, so, I, I was really pleased with them. The, the lens is really nice, it's super sharp, it's really contrasty, it's, it's really lovely. I, I think it's an amazing camera. Um, I have heard many praises about the uh, Minox. I try not to pay too much attention to the hype when, when people talk about cameras. Uh, because most of the time I feel like, oh, yeah, it's a good camera, but it wasn't as amazing as everybody was talking. But this one, the Minox 35, if you can get your hands on one of these, they are definitely worth the shot. But uh, if you're like me and you can measure fit, um, be aware that you need an external rangefinder to make it happen, because otherwise it's going to be super hard or basically impossible. When I first got it, I, I didn't have the rangefinder and I thought it was going to be really difficult. And it wasn't only difficult, it was basically impossible to make a good roll. Um, the very first test roll that I had with this camera was a mess and everything was out of focus. So uh, I would highly, highly recommend you to get an external rangefinder if you're planning on buying one of these. And so that's the Minox. It's a great camera, I highly recommend it. And this one is going to one of my patrons. And if you wanna be part of the raffle in which I give away cameras every single month, usually one or two cameras. I also give away some films and whatnot. Uh, you can join the raffle by joining my Patreon and then you'll get access to that and some other content and posts that I sometimes do and I tell you what I'm doing and we all have a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> So that was my experience with the Minox. Have you tried it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think I highly recommend it uh, if you can get your hands on one of these with a rangefinder. And I would love to know what you think. If you have used it before, let me know your impressions and I would love to read them and have some talk in the comment section. I hope you had a good week and I'll see you next week with another episode. And until then, just keep shooting guys.